Folks, here are six tips to ruling any conversation. Start with a genuine and sincere compliment. Compliments are the best possible way to begin a conversation, no doubt about it. Not only do they provide a perfect opening line and a possible door for discussion of those topics you wish to pursue, but they also make the person feel good about themselves. Someone you've never met, pay them a nice compliment and make sure it's genuine. Don't pull it out of the air. Don't contrive it. Know who you're talking to. The more specific your compliment, the better it is. For example, commenting on someone's profile, their post, uh, the cover, their video, or, or overall Facebook or LinkedIn activity is concise, sincere, and specific. And guess what? It's flattering. So if you call people, if you call people from the social media sites, there's a there's a perfect perfect lead and a perfect perfect way to compliment them when you first talk to them. And, and if you come across hokey, people will read through that. You know, hi Bill, I saw your post about such and such on Facebook, and I thought it was I thought it was striking and and, and really on target. And I compliment you on your on your thoughts uh, about it and how well thought out you were when you presented it for everyone else to see. Be genuine. Embrace pre-qualifying small talk. Small talk can be the most fulfilling type of conversation, believe it or not. It's both functional and necessary. Small talk is what leads the way to deeper conversation, much in the way that a car must gradually accelerate to a certain speed rather than hitting 60 miles an hour instantaneously. Asking someone, what do you do, is part of making small talk. It's not inquisitive. It's part of getting to know someone and showing them that you really care. What do you do? Say, what do you do? Ask a lot of questions. Be in discovery about the other person and listen closely. Like I said, don't stand on the ball of your on the ball of your feet, ready to pounce and 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 get your two cents worth. in. body language is easy to read, and people will see that. Stand back and relax. Be prepared to listen. The answers to your questions will provide you with the key information to know about them. Don't rush the conversation or switch gears to ask manipulative questions. Don't do that. People pick up on that also. Instead, patiently wait for the opportunity to present itself in order to get the answers you need. Say, how long did you practice that network marketing company you told me about? Six years? Cool. How well did you do? Hmm. Did you have any upline training? Did you have someone like me, you know, on the phone with you uh, once a week or every other week uh, offering a uh, offering a teleseminar, teaching you the things that, that that I know that can help propel your business even faster and more efficiently? Did you have any help like that? Notice what I just did, right? I asked the questions and I built it up to a benefit. Pay close attention to the conversation and use their answers to move it forward. You should constantly be looking for tell me more opportunities. While you have a list of potential questions on your list or in the back of your mind, look to their last answer first for your next question. That's the way to be really effective in asking the best possible questions at the right time, isn't it? Let the conversation develop and mature on its own. It's not rocket science. You don't have to go into a conversation with someone with a list of 200 questions that you might want to scan on your whiteboard to see which one might fit the conversation next. Just be natural. Ask one question and let it flow from there. But always bring it back to a positive note on how your expertise can help them with their expertise. And remember this, every prospect is unique. No two are the same. Some people think that is absolutely false. Everyone has their own desires, their own goals, their own dreams, their own problems. Root those out and talk about them, but always tell them how you can help them with those problems and those goals and those dreams. And be honest about it. 
Don't be hypey. No BS. Don't flower it up with a bunch of BS. Keep business, business, but keep it friendly and show that you care. This is an obvious one. Please be mindful of your tone. Your level of friendliness can make or break the receptivity of the other person. The frequent use of LOL, you know, laugh out loud in your text message, demonstrates a friendly and happy demeanor on your part or others. It's not hokey. It's allowing your personality to show. And there's nothing wrong with allowing your personality to show. People appreciate that. Some people might think you're being hokey and that you're just using some strategy or technique on them, and that's okay. You know, some people just have this big negative shield built around them that you, no matter how hard you try, are not going to break through it on that first call or second call, but sooner or later as they get to know you, let them know you. You will break through. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything. Never, under any circumstances, argue with someone. Never disagree with them. You might say something, if you don't agree with something that your prospect, your new friend has said, you might say, well, that's an interesting perspective. I hadn't considered that. Tell me more. Invite the door for them sharing their knowledge with you and then circle back to your knowledge with them. The opportunity will hit you in every conversation and you will see, I promise you, you will see it. Your questions show that you're genuinely interested in what they have to say. And you must do that. You must get to that level. Let the other person do most of the talking. This is a major point. If you go into a conversation and immediately begin dominating it with your own anecdotes and comments and explanations, the other person may quickly become disinterested. Guess what? They don't care about you. At least not yet. Sooner or later they will. When they get that first check and that second check and they remember how you showed them the way and how you are there for them and to answer their questions and help them make even more of those checks and larger checks, they will care. Instead, seek to keep the focus on them as much as possible, not on you. You care about their new little puppy that they got. You care about the fact that their grandmother just went into the hospital. How sad. Is there anything you can do? You'll say a prayer for her. Be genuine if you say that, by the way. Don't just say it. Be genuine. If you don't believe in that, don't say it at all. When you're text chatting, you should never type more words than they did. Isn't that interesting? Think about that. You do not want to show dominance. You do not want to show that you may know more than they know. If they send you a text with 12 words, do not go on with 15 or 20. Go up to 12 with your reply. 10 maybe, 6 maybe, but not more than 12. And lastly, keep the conversation as light and easy as possible. Don't start complaining about your job or talking about what's wrong with your life or the government or taxes or any of those other issues that we all deal with every day. If you do that, most people will want to avoid you. They don't want to listen to negativity, even if they are negative. You can listen to it for a while, but always circle back to what it is that you wanted to talk about. People tend to gravitate toward others with a positive attitude. Remember my morning prayer? I'm sharing something very private with you. I've never shared that with anyone, by the way. It's been part of my morning routine for 20 years. Give me strength to go through the day with a positive attitude and gratitude and generosity to all I come in contact with. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being on tonight's call. 